We are on final descent to Raleigh Duro International Airport, home of Research Triangle Park. Since its inception in 1959, Research, Research Triangle, Triangle Park, Park has always been more than a place. Well, my absolute earliest memory of the park was when I was a freshman at UNC, and we were driving, we had a date, several of us, we were driving to Raleigh for, uh, to go to the circus and we got lost in RTP and there was nothing out here then except for very few businesses and we didn't know where in the world we were so we were late getting back and for women in 1967 we had closing hours so I got in a lot of trouble for being late. <laughs> in 1968 my family negotiated with the Research Triangle Foundation a concession agreement to build everything you see here now and some of what was torn down. When I was at NC State in civil engineering, there was a big discussion about, that would have been like 1960, whether the park was actually going to make it. All of this is deja vu to me because I was here when we put the first, when we did the groundbreaking 52 years ago. The original master plan for the park showed very large lot developments, um, big companies on big lots, and this small commercial area in the center of the park. Early in my career, I worked out at RTP, and there was nowhere to eat except Governor's Inn. And so some of my best meals ever were on those special occasions when we would leave work and go eat the buffet at Governor's Inn. And I remember one day I would leave school and go home and change to catch the bus, and I fell asleep and woke up right here in front of the complex, and I saw the sign that said the hotel was being built, Governor's Inn. And I looked to my roommate and I said, what, are they building a hotel out here in the middle of nowhere? That place will never make it, which is one of my famous lines because I ended up spending the next 41 years proving myself wrong because the hotel did make it and it did flourish for a number of years. As Rob said, you know, when we started, there was nothing out here. Where is RTP? I only see trees. But as things began to change and transpire, we needed to have a central part of the park where people could live, shop, work, and not just the campuses. Over 50 years ago, if there were not people who had the vision for Research Triangle Park, this region simply would not be what it is today, which means the people that live here today, that work here today, to do the things that are important in their lives today wouldn't have the opportunities that they have. We're building this for you. Come see us at the Hub. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. If I could have your attention, if you want to come inside of the tent, uh, where it's somewhat cooler, uh, but if you want, we're going to get started in like five, okay, ten seconds, okay? So just come on in, get settled. May 
I buy a vowel? <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, for those of you I haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Mindy Colden, and I am Vice President for Faulkner Construction in our North Carolina offices. It's super exciting to, uh, to see it getting to this point where we're really getting ready to, to rock and roll. I could not be more delighted that the RTP is beginning to embrace this idea of a complete community. If I have clients or family that want to come visit, they can stay here. And for me, meeting clients and meeting friends who live on the other side of the triangle in a very central location is just going to be a game changer. I think what I'm most excited about for Hub RTP is for this community to grow even closer. Designing a facility that will incorporate live, work, and play principles. Well, what's exciting about it is that it's a, uh, a regeneration. So I'm, I'm really excited to be able to see the, the whole evolution that I've seen over the last 50 years and to see it from the start to the finish to start again and hopefully see it till it concluded till it, this is finished is exciting. Because although RTP could not have been built anywhere else, it takes a special vision to, to realize, realize that ideas, ideas are their own powerful currency. Uh, good afternoon everybody, I'm Larry Wilson with KDC. Um, we're working with the foundation on the infrastructure work that's underway right now as well as the overall planning of the project. and. Ultimately, um, we'll be the developer for the vertical portion, um, primarily the office. So um, I have to commend the board um, and Scott and his staff um, for the vision. Um, I think it's important to recognize um, the vision that the, um, the founders of the park had 50 to 60 years ago and, and what, a, what a huge impact it's had not only on, on the region, um, but nationally and internationally. Um, and so this is a big step. Um, I'm most excited to, uh, to get Boxyard kicked off. I think it's a great group of local business owners. I think we're going to see it become much more attractive to small, innovative businesses than it has in the past. It gives opportunity for everyone, all small and locally sourced businesses like Wonder Pop. I'm a tech entrepreneur and we like to move really, really fast. We're finally here, breaking ground. I couldn't tell you how excited it was for me just personally. Driving up that street, seeing the First Citizens branch torn down, seeing the grading actually happening, seeing the diggers on the site. This is super exciting. It plays a huge economic role in the state, employing more than 50,000 people. And this project, the hub, is the center of it all. Uh, through RTP, we're able to uh, increase our economic impact and continue to serve as an economic uh, engine for the state of North Carolina. What we're doing with Hub RTV isn't only going to be important for economic development in this region, it's going to be important for economic development all across our state. Also to Timothy Downs, I see him. Timothy is the economic development officer for um, Durham County. He hit the ground running when he came here about 18 months ago. So Durham is a small community but it wins big. It's a, it has a very big role in economic development for the state, for our region, uh, certainly for RTP. So this is just another chance for us to expand our stature in this state. There uh, is an opportunity for a couple of marquee companies to, uh, to move their headquarter or large regional offices here, and I think that's going to only add to the life. Having major employers in the Research Triangle Park is good for our whole region. It gives work opportunity, places for our local businesses to grow and expand into, and really creates us as a destination for incredible research and innovation, uh, jobs and work opportunity. So I'm working with companies on a daily basis that are looking for a new home, and hopefully Hub RTP will be that new home. The 300 companies in RTP, MAA Residential, KDC, JLL, Faulkner Construction, Bridgepoint, and so many others who have invested in this project with us. Um, good afternoon, my name is Matt Smith. I'm with Mid-America Apartments, MAA. Um, I'm here with my colleague today, Elizabeth Long. And we've been involved in this project now since inception, which I think has been two years. Um, but we're, we're grateful to be involved. Um, Project's had some changes. Um, KDC has joined the project. We're very glad to have them. Um, and we're 
very grateful to be here, and I'm very grateful to be working with Scott. Um, he's done a great job and shown great leadership uh, for this entire project. And the bigger they are, the more challenging they are. Every single day, I'm going to get up and I'm going to learn something new. I, I just love construction. I like to see a building before it goes up and then the finished product. Honestly, I was thinking about that this morning. Like when it's built, I'll be able to ride past and say, you know, I participated in that. <laughs> so I like to uh, see when I'm driving on the road, what I can say I help to these people to build in highways, buildings, apartments, schools. Yes, that's why we make it proud to doing this job. Every project's different. Every project has its nuances, and I like that challenge. Solve problems and make jobs. and Solve issues for our clients and deliver the types of uh, environments that they want to be in. I think out here on a job like this, there's, there's no shortage of, of challenges. Why do you do this every day? Where else can you uh, get paid to play in a sandbox? <laughs> Whether there's somebody working on a line in a manufacturing place or an entrepreneur starting a new, uh, new business, it's, it's just exciting and I'd love to see it happen. We don't believe in designing buildings just for a theoretical magazine or book or something. We like to see our buildings get built. So seeing the start of construction of a building like this, a project like this, is very exciting for us. Oh, I love the feeling of being able to take something from where it was at one point and kind of point out, okay, well, this was here, this was here, this is what we did. And when you're riding with people, friends, family, uh, other coworkers, pr prospective jobs, I mean, it's, it's just good to see a whole plan come together. Uh, my faith in God keeps me moving every day, that I get another breath and another day to experience whatever lays before me. Every day. Uh, live it like it's my last day. I think what I want to teach my children and what I want to uh, leave behind for them is a strong work ethic and investment into your community and the members in your community. I think that if, uh, if you diligently work and giving back to your community, uh, your community will provide for you what you need. Uh, I know I'll be proud of the work and hopefully I'll have my son with me and be able to show him what hard work and dedication can do. Make you stick your chest out and be proud. Proud that you had a hand in it. It's something you can take your grandkids to see one day and you can tell them, hey, I helped build this. Today, today we're, we're building, building on that vision, vision by breaking ground on a, a new, new idea. idea. The Research Triangle Park has been some entity out there, but for the average person who was not employed in the Research Triangle Park. It was hard to fully embrace what it meant to them. Building engineer. Director. Owner. Foundation investigation. I am retired. An estimator. Lead cook and owner. We're landscape architects. Vice president. CEO and founder. Real estate developer. Chancellor for North Carolina Central University. Project manager. Executive director. Construction manager. Founder and CEO. Superintendent with Bridgepoint General Contract. Emeritus member of the board of RTP. Vice president. Chancellor. North Carolina State University. Project manager at Bridge Bridgepoint General Contracting, President. Construction Manager, President of Duke University, Foreman uh, Fundraising, Due to Pain Architect. And so now with hotel and retail and housing, it's like we had a donut that now has a whole lot more filling. Everyday people in this region who don't have reason from 8 to 5 to be in the park, all of a sudden now have not just reason, but a place, an intentional space. I have been here for, or in construction for three days now. <laughs> Three, like for real, like three real days. Like for real, yes. Unless you count last week whenever we came for orientation. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Well, I was driving a bus and then um, with this virus, it kind of went downhill pretty quick. So he said, hey, we're hiring for off road dump truck drivers. Why don't you come on out and see if you can handle it? Uh, at a time when many are struggling financially, this development will create jobs and contribute to our economic growth. This puts me in a better position to further advance myself later on in the future and it's a steady job that holds through even when the um, like the virus and things like that it's been a job that's been steady moving ever since. Uh, I've been working hard and diligently over the past 10 to 15 years trying to make a name for myself and, and our crew uh, tweezing herbs and flowers onto plates well um, in the back of my mind I've always wanted to cook barbecue and I think that bringing that uh, attention to detail into what we're doing 
in a simplistic setting with barbecue is going to really set us apart. And then obviously the oysters. Who's, who's doing barbecue and oysters, man? We got barbecues, oysters, and cold beverages. I started playing around with website development when I was in middle school in the 1990s. Uh, my dad taught me HTML and it kind of blossomed from there. I became obsessed with it. It was my biggest hobby. I grew up doing it, started out in the, in the North Carolina tobacco fields and 15 years old went into the construction industry. That kind of opportunity for interaction is only going to make this region a richer place for everyone. Well, down here it's a lot different. We moved down here from West Virginia where my husband commuted two hours to work one way. So here we're 20 minutes from the house, which is awesome because he's actually home more and, you know, you get to spend more time at home where other jobs where you might have to work late nights or weekends and things like that, holidays and things you're off so you can be with your family. For me, when you uh, mention RTP, it signifies a place where our higher education institutions, uh, along with the high-tech industries and pharmaceutical industries that we have come together to partner. Well, the Research Triangle Park is the center, a convening force, a thing that brings together our universities and our research professionals and our businesses. It establishes our brand identity, helps us compete on the world stage. RTP is a very personal place for me. Um, my very first construction project was in 1997, about two and a half miles down the road on the big EPA campus. Um, I was part of the construction team there, and here I am 23 years later, owning my own company back in the park, working on this transformational project. It's, it's really pretty cool. Uh, RTP serves as a hub of innovation, facilitating uh, the journey from discovery to commercialization uh, and enabling us to get uh, the most out of our partnerships with Duke, uh, NC State, uh, North Carolina Central University and other universities in the area. Uh, and I'm excited uh, about the opportunities it'll provide for our students, our graduates and our faculty to come together to work. Living in the Triangle means 30 minutes of driving to get anywhere. So I'm really excited about having Hub RTP right here in the middle of the Triangle because it can be a central place for everybody to come together. The reason I wanted to come here was because of the University and the Triangle and the University's affiliation with all the companies that work in the, in the park and just the, the vibe and the innovation that goes on in Research Triangle Park. I am a lifelong Triangle resident and have been watching the growth here unfold for my entire life and uh, it's really special to me to be part of this uh, really game-changing event and uh, kicking things off for what is going to be a fantastic uh, new chapter in RTP's 60-year history. RTP is about to come to life uh, more so than ever before you know RTP has been a, a thing since I was a kid and it's always just kind of been out here in the middle uh, of, of, of uh, in between Raleigh and Durham, so now I think this is going to help kind of bridge that gap um, and create somewhat of a food and beverage community and entertainment community here in RTP for all these folks that live around the area. I love this area and the fact that it is growing and bustling and it's really diverse with lots of great diverse people and uh, diverse companies uh, and I'm really looking forward to um, having more people and more activity here uh, in RTP around the clock. Well, being on the foundation board uh, for a number of years, we've sort of seen some huge changes in the RTP area. And so it's been exciting to me to be a part of sort of making some of the decisions, you know, about what direction the park was going to go in. I moved down here uh, in the mid 70s. My dad worked for IBM and uh, spent a bit of time on this piece of property with uh, the governor's inn that used to be here. Um, so, uh, so it's pretty exciting to see the changes happening and, and to be a part of that. It'll be a hub of activity, that's the name. And it's a perfect location. It's right here on I-40 at the expressway and the toll road, easy to get to, in and out. It's close to our Boxyard and Frontier complexes. Wonder Puff and Boxyard are uh, new best friends. We will be having our very first storefront here at Boxyard RTP. What we see right next to us with, with Hub RTP is a chance for a new vision for a new era, for a new region, for the park and for our community.
Because if the past 60 years have taught us anything, anything, our story is just beginning. So it will be important to be intentional as the Hub RTP is being constructed so that we can ensure that all people who live in our region have the opportunity to benefit from the prosperity that it will bring. I think it's fair to say that for too long, too many people in our region have been shut out from the waves of prosperity that they see right around the corner or just down the street. When my parents first got here from uh, Pakistan, uh, my mom actually lived there for a while before, and my dad lived here uh, for about like 10 years, and he was just working at a gas station going to school. So his hustle was just making enough money to afford living here and going to school. And, that, and, th and that's changed a lot because now, you know, my dad actually, uh, he worked in this park, uh, he worked for Nortel, um, and my mom actually worked for IBM in this park. So it's, it's kind of crazy how that all can kind of come together and you know them giving us opportunities uh, to be where we are today and for, you know they, they didn't have a foundation that, w that I have because of them. Without them I would have no foundation. So the fact that they could come here and just find their home so that they could make it my home it's pretty, it's pretty special. Talk about being a woman in construction. How is it? I'm tired of that question. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, when I started in construction 27 years ago, I just didn't think, I know I don't look that old. Let me start. <laughs> I didn't think that it was odd to be a woman in construction. Um, it's just what I did. It was my job. Um, and, and I encourage any woman that's in the field that wants to get in the field don't don't let being a woman discourage you. Uh, I think we offer a lot to the construction team. We're really good at multitasking. Uh, we can keep a tight task list. Um, and, and I think we offer a really good um, team building uh, mentality to a lot of the projects. So particularly for companies that are moving in this into this area, or uh, organizations and uh, industries that are looking to move into RTP, they are looking for diversity. Uh, as we've known. And I think North Carolina Central University provides a great opportunity to offer that diversity. We are an HBCU uh, and we offer so many programs. Uh, we have two major research uh, institutes, uh, the Bright and BBRI, uh, and that gives our students the opportunity to gain access into the workforce. So when you talk about diversity, uh, I think we are a central uh, to that particular need of many, many organizations and industries around the world. It's exciting, right in the heart of the triangle and bringing extraordinary work-life balance to everybody who lives and works in the hub. As a black Muslim woman who makes cotton candy for a living, I think this is very important for people outside of the marginalized community to see what we can do in every aspect of the world. Well, I've been in construction for almost 25 years. The challenge is um, I face every day is simply not being the biggest person on the site, but they've all got my back, so I'm not worried about it. It feels like a great opportunity uh, to be a, be a part of a project like this. Um, and it, it really shows that, you know, things are, the doors are opening uh, for especially small businesses and I will say minority small businesses because that's important. It's, it's changed and I feel like we're getting one step closer to what things should be like. I think being a woman in tech well, allows me to fly a bit under the radar. I don't get contacted much by recruiters. Um, I have previously been kind of under appreciated maybe, uh, but those are downsides but also upsides. It has allowed me to focus really on what I want to do and where I want to be and allowed me to make my own path in that. We're just excited to be on board to be a black-owned filmmaking company. It's a major undertaking and it's something that we can always look back years and years after it was built and say we had a major play in this particular project, right? I'm operating the dump trucks. What is some of the stuff that you're loading up and dumping out? Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely room uh, for women and young, um, young, young girls and women um, that if they enjoy math, if they enjoy um, engineering, if they enjoy art, there's all different kinds of areas they could go into construction. 
You know, I, I really don't come to work thinking about being a woman in construction. I, I come and try to, uh, to do the best that I can and, uh, you know, it's gotten me to where I am today. I would encourage, you know, any other women getting into this industry, just like anybody else, not to be afraid to ask questions. You don't have to know all the answers, you just have to know where to get them. Now that we've begun, come help us write the next chapter. So we're sitting here outside Hub RTP, construction going on now. You see Highway 54 right here, you see Interstate 40 right there, and you really see the center of the region all around us. The most exciting moment of today is going to be those buildings over there being knocked down. Groundbreaking is always exciting. Breaking ground on this project has been in the works for almost a decade now and it's exciting to see the, the dirt actually moving and the grading happening and the buildings being taken down. This is a transformation. So you're actually about to witness the, the blasting process. Instead of doing rock excavation we're taking the approach of blasting to uh, lower the elevation to install underground utilities. You'll hear a series of three horns uh, here in just a minute. That's the five minute warning. You will hear another three set of horns. That is the one minute warning. You will hear a long one horn. That is one minute to blast. You'll hear them come across the radio or you might hear them yell across the job site, fire in the hole and then but we're so glad that you could join us virtually. See you at the Hub. You want it again? Are our zippers up? Forever groundbreaking. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Three, two, one. I have to commend the board um, and Scott and his staff um, for the vision. Thanks to great leaders, Scott Levitan currently and his predecessors, Research Triangle Park has meant so much to our community and our region for many, many decades. So we feel like we're working for the best A-team uh, at RTP and the S best A-team uh, with KDC. And of course, you know, it takes many other people, the structural engineers, the mechanical engineers. Tell me one thing you're excited about. Hey, or Fred. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Aaron Nelson, like Willie or Ricky, Mandela, Research Triangle Park, where badass people go to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> only you can only use it if you use your boom at the end. Right. <laughs> check, 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 check. Hey, boy, the audio sounds so good, boy. Huh? 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 Freaking audio sounds so good, what? Huh? I'm sure they don't want to see dip cans in my in my pocket while I'm on camera. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I know you said this take five minutes, but I'm sorry. All right. Today we're. Ugh. Sorry, I just cussed on there. Oh my god, it's going out of control. I do one more time. One more time. Con con <laughs> forever groundbreaking opportunity. No, nope, just forever groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> we go ads on too, it ain't we? <laughs> now see, I didn't put on any lipstick because I thought, who's gonna ever see my lips right, right. in this day and age? And you here look, we go. You look good, shoot. I'll sort of bite my lips a little bit. You look good, don't even worry about it. <laughs> Make me look good now, okay? Yes, sir. We got <laughs> you, brother. 
Most favorite part of the day. Can't say lunchtime, can I? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. You made it, you made it just uh, so incredibly easy for me. That's my goal. Yeah. That's my goal. It's good to meet you, sir. And good I'll to meet you. Around. All right. Forever groundbreaking. Too easy. <laughs> We're done, sir. Too easy? Was it too easy? Well, it make it more difficult. I know we did. Thank you, Ken. That's my pleasure. I hope you get to drink some water and eat some food. Yes, yeah, it's great. Because it's hot. Just a little bit. By breaking ground on a new idea. Boom! We're done, bro. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> Last question. Tell me why your why is your hard hat so cool, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. These are I just grew I grew up wearing these. This is what I've always been used to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it.